ready to achieve great heights, then you're in the right place. Welcome to Power Your Performance, the podcast where we dive deep with leaders in the gaming world and beyond and learn the techniques they use to power their lives. I am your host, Gary Kleinman. So Power Your Performance welcomes Karen Todd. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is a pleasure. I've got so many things to talk to you about. I love your your history and background and certainly what you're doing. Um, I know you're in Michigan, so hello, Michigan, as well. Your background is is amazing. I mean, your current title is VP Global Brand Marketing at Kiowa. But when I look at where you start and where you are, it's it's a, a fascinating journey, um, first and foremost, from nutrition and performance. I know that you'll talk about your degrees, but where did the interest itself come from? I, gosh, going back, I'd, I'd have to say one of the biggest influences to get into nutrition and learn more about the human body was probably one of my professors at Texas A&M, Dr. Uh, Joanne Lupton. Um, she was very dynamic in the world of nutrition and just made the, you know, you're sitting in this huge, huge room full of 200, 300 people and she made it come alive and you were, you were just glued to her the entire time. Um, so that, that probably was the first time I learned more about nutrition than ever before and realized that the human body is pretty amazing, um, that what it can do and, and part of the gut, the brain, all of that connection is, is just vital and so important. Growing up, was that a subject matter in your household? I mean, were you a part of a family that was eating more greens than the neighbor as opposed to more red meat? Or is it really in that lecture that a fire got lit? It's so my mother, it's funny, my mother was a home, home economics um, degree and, and taught school for many, many years. But so she she knew and 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 taught us growing up about good nutrition. And, you know, we always had your your balanced meal at every every meal. Um, so it was just something we grew up with. Um, but learning more about what's inside that piece of chicken or what's inside that broccoli, that was a whole new world. Um, and I didn't realize that until until college, <laughs> <laughs> which is really, you know, kind of an interesting place because most people go to college and what is it? It's the college 10 that that freshman put on. So uh, you go there and you find out that you've got this incredible interest in nutrition and performance that has lasted your career. Uh, did you go into Texas A&M as, A&M as a different major and you switched after that those lectures? I, I went into a and as a biomedical science um, degree, didn't really know what I wanted to do. Biomedical science is basically studying anatomy, biology, you know, related to the human body. Um, and then I think my sophomore year, that's when I, I took it, my first nutrition class and realized, wow, there's something more here. Um, but it didn't stop with just nutrition. Um, I wanted to get a degree in food science as well. Um, that was a real, a real interest to me to, to learn about how foods were made and not just the foods that are, you know, grown on trees or naturally uh, available, but, um, foods that you'd find in the grocery store that were packaged and, um, and healthy for you. I think that was the, the big, big part of it too. When you did that was food science. It was, it was an established program, but it couldn't yes. have been anywhere as developed as the food science programs that, you know, universities and colleges are offering today. I mean, when you go back, do you, does it look to you as being kind of archaic when you look back or is it pretty advanced at the time? It, it was pretty advanced um, at a and at the time. They actually had incredible ties to the industry at the time where as a student, um, sophomore, junior, even a senior, I could talk with people in the industry, like the, the ADMs of the world or, um, people making these raw materials, the ingredients, and they would send samples for us to work with. Um, that kind of blew my mind that they would do that. And, and then we, we would develop these foods that, and at at the time it was the early nineties. So if you remember the fat replacers, um, (laughs) <laughs> the, the craze of uh, lowering trans fats and uh, replace it with this, not that. 
uh, that was quite fun. And we learned along the way, you know, how much to put into a product and what, what some of the side effects were from that too. <laughs> so. I guess what, and maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's also long before things were genetically modified, right? So most of that was natural supplements or, or, or growth or whatever the protocol was, as opposed to now where they're looking at manufacturing those same things out of thin air, essentially, which is fascinating, just the um, technology and growth. But what also fascinated me is that you also chose to be an EMT during that Oh, wow. you did your research um, <laughs> uh, I need yeah. you I, yeah, I, I need you to set my arm I heard it uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a test to see what you remember from EMT days but yeah I mean that's fascinating tell me about it that was a lot of fun um, I, I took I was a lifeguard growing up and you know my, one of my first jobs at uh, that I could uh, earn a paycheck with was a lifeguard. And as a lifeguard, you took um, CPR, standard first aid, and then it, sent, it kind of grew from there. And another teacher that just really had a big impact was the, the EMT teacher. And they, I basically got involved with the, the emergency medical service on campus. And it was a student-run organization. Um, we'd, we'd sleep at the... I guess the clinic or the facility where where we would um, take calls, um, dispatch people, dispatch an ambulance. Um, we also did um, overnights at the in Houston at some of the major hospitals with the fire stations there. Run, you know, working with them, it, it was just fascinating. And emergency medicine is it, it just puts your mind in a whole different state. Um, you know, you forget about things that what you're doing. You go back to your basic training of what you know of how to save lives. And um, yeah, it was it was pretty fascinating. No, it would, it would um, have to be. Um, Did you think at that point? I mean, because I can see it in your face, the the joy you had doing that, that maybe instead of the path that you obviously did take, was there a period of time that you go, hey, maybe I'll go into medicine? I I did, gam I I shouldn't say gamble with that, but I I did um, look at doing that for a while. Um, very competitive group, uh, especially at Texas A&M for medical school. Um, I really enjoyed the classwork, but I didn't enjoy the the competition of better than you. And um, I just that wasn't for me. Um, I wanted to, to do something more with that. Um, but a lot of friends are medical doctors and that's it's great. It's a great profession. We need them. <laughs> are they jealous? You know, because you hear so many doctors, especially these days, that get disillusioned, not with medicine, but the practice of medicine. Um, and, and and here you are beaming um, and doing what you're doing in the ingredient. We'll get into all the positive things that not only you're doing, but the company's doing. Um, do they always look at you and go, but you're so happy. And, and we're not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone finds their niche eventually if it's wh whatever passion they do have and with medicine they they find it with uh, obstetrics or you know working with seniors it it I think it it's a pretty wide gambit there <laughs> so and and then you you get into the consumer side right so you graduate you've got your multitude of degrees and and now you're you know you got your cap and gown and you flip your tassel and you go i know everything in the world that there is to know about this subject and i'm going to go help consumers what do you do next so my next next stop was to find a job um as a dietitian, it mainly I, at that time, early 90s, most of the dietitians were going right into the hospitals and or, or clinics and, and working, you know, with with meal preparation or counseling people around diets. Um, that wasn't a huge passion of mine <laughs> and, and why I tagged on the food science degree. So I was really looking at food companies and um, went to a, an IFT, Institute of Food Technologist trade show, um, started interviewing with people and just really clicked with um, the, that industry and the, the people doing it. Um, so that got me into one of my first jobs and um, it was working with finished products, creating finished products, and then also educating about it. Um, I was one of the first dietitians 
for the company at the time that um, came in and edu- educated people on why take dietary supplements. Uh, very revolutionary at that point in time. Uh, one of my fellow dietitians said, don't do that. You're going to ruin your career. <laughs> was, Are you kidding? Um, so, you know, dig down even more. And um, I've been doing it ever since. It's It's been really fun. It's been a, a nice, long, fun journey. Without any formal marketing background per se, at least educationally, you just kind of start marketing. I'm mean, marketing is at its core telling a story to the ultimate target consumer, whatever that happens to be. So essentially, I think what I'm hearing is you were able to craft a story for what you were doing, and then you probably turn around many years later and go, "I guess I can market because that's all we do, right? Is is tell these stories." Did you enjoy that as much as the scientific nutritional creation of products? I mean, I, it- I did actually go on and get my MBA um, with one of my companies. And what was interesting at the time, I, I felt I could do the job without having the degree, but I needed the degree to justify doing it. Um, and you're absolutely right. It's telling a story. And, and making it click with that consumer. Um, that That's what's really, really important. Um, I, I've enjoyed it because I can, I can kind of guide and manage that versus being told. Um, I guess that's one of the things I like to, to guide and manage versus uh, versus ex- execute. <laughs> so um, that, that's one of my, my passions as well. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting um, in terms of your background and the merging of the science and the story. You know, many marketers can tell a story based upon the science that we're given, right? And and, and people say, well, this is what the product does or this is what the service does. Now go craft a story and tell that. Um, it, it gives you, you know, it, a tremendous advantage <clears throat> that you understand what's behind the story. So you you must be a more credible storyteller, certainly in your environment, because you understand why it is important as opposed to just parroting. Well, and, and what's really important and, and what I like about working in the ingredient side is that you learn so much about how things are manufactured, what's the history behind it, um, the science behind it. You can even have an impact on uh, where the science goes, um, what the next study is. Uh, that, so that that's really, really important, but also having truth and transparency and being honest um, with, with everything. Um, that's that's a big part of the company and a big part of um, my background is just what what we do we can stand behind and if if i don't think i can stand behind something then um you'll know it right away (laughs) so um but there's a lot of passion and a lot of um interest in in what we do because it's so fascinating to me and then you get to kiowa now tell me how you get there i mean it's just did, did you look at them and go, hey, I like, I mean, it's a, it's obviously a multinational company with um, tentacles in lots of different areas. Did you look at them and say, hey, that's where I want to be? What's that process to get? Because you've been there for an extended period of time and done incredibly well. And now you, you've seen the growth of the market for not only supplements, but very specific things, which we're going to talk about and relate it to gaming and esports shortly. So sure. how do you get there? Um, is that a job fair? You answer an ad, they come looking for you. No, actually with Kiowa, um, they were way ahead of their time. Um, they, I knew, knew about Kiowa for Coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. Um, they brought it to the market and they were known for CoQ10. Um, but they had asked me if I would create a global branding program for them. And um, so when I joined Kiowa, I'm like, oh, CoQ10 is a great ingredient. <laughs> and let's let's go. Um, well, when I joined, they had just discontinued selling CoQ10, <laughs> but they had all of these other ingredients they were that they were talking about, and I was learning about. I was learning about Cognizant, the acetylcholine product for brain health. Never heard about this before. Um, glutathione. You know, what's glutathione? The master antioxidant. Why haven't I heard about this? Um, so they had all these new and interesting ingredients I'd never heard of before. 
but l- looking at the science, looking at what, what was behind it, um, they asked me to come in and create that program for it. Uh, it just, it just seemed um, van- a fantastic opportunity. And I say they were ahead of their time because I've, I've worked remotely for Kiowa for 17 years and wow. for seven, that's a long time to that's a long time. Uh, and they, they asked me, you know, is, will that be a problem? And I said, no, of course I can be wherever I need to be. Um, and it, so it's just, it worked out very nice. And Kiowa, of course, is a Japanese company now owned by Kirin, Kirin Holdings um, in Japan. So if you're familiar with with some of the Japanese beer, they're one of the, the major manufacturers for um, responsible alcohol manufacturing. Um, but it's it's been a really nice journey. And they're, they're always very on the forefront of, of things. And, um, I, I think that was always in the back of my mind, a reason why we, I've stayed so long, um, because it is a long time to be with any company. Um, oh, without a sure. doubt. Uh, it's certainly in, in our country, but when you get that opportunity, do you kind of look and go, God, this is great. Now, what do I do? I mean, I've got to get into creating a, a global plan. And was some of that scary to say, really, I've got, can I, I mean, not that you ever doubt yourself, but then, you know, sometimes it's hard to, uh, to wish for something and then you get it. Was it overwhelming, especially with the size of the company? I've always worked in global companies and mainly outside of the U S okay. so the challenge here was to work in the U S and, and create the brands here. So, um, working with Asia, working with Europe, that was just a a natural fit and collaborating with my colleagues in these other areas was also natural. Um, Knowing you, you, you create something global for everyone, but then you market it locally and you really get to know what the market needs and what, what the market doesn't need, you know, what works, what doesn't. But you're doing that remotely. Are, is your team remote as well all over the world and you're coordinating time zones, languages, um, different degrees and different history. I mean, that, that's gotta be in and of a a wonderful challenge, but nevertheless a challenge. It, it time zones. Um, I've, uh, again, I've always worked with globally. So I, I would have phone calls early in the morning, late at night, um, to have that global team meeting that, that was just a natural fit. If you wanted to talk with someone, you pick up the phone and call them. Um, we were doing video conferencing with with these big, huge, you know, video conferencing machines that you'd have to go to a location for and, um, way, you know, early, early on. Um, but they're not, everyone is working remotely. Everyone, of course, through the pandemic has been, um, and and we got really used to having picking you know, up Zoom calls because everyone no one's no one's traveling everyone's at home so we got really used to that convenience. <laughs> well, it, it is, and now obviously there is that debate of do we go back and 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 how much. Um, I'm very familiar with a lot of your your current ingredients, but I want to hear from you uh, the passion that the company has certainly with Cognizant. Um, it, it what it does is remarkable, but I'm going to let you explain exactly what it what it does, and how long what what did it take to create that? What was that science behind it? And then, um, from a marketing perspective, what's the process in even naming the brand Cognizant? Um, because you see that on every shelf in every store. Where do these names come from? Wow, that's a whole nother um, <laughs> discussion too. But <laughs> it's, um, the, for for the brand names, it really has to mean something to a consumer or to, or to whoever's taking it. And, and cognizant, it it just sounds like it's related to the brain. Um, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a really nice fit there. Um, but but when you're when you're ideating and creating brand names, you throw everything out there, and and then you you know, try to start moving with what fits, what works better here. Um, and then you see what's taken. <laughs> There's a lot of, <laughs> you're already taken. Uh, so then, you know, it's, it, 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 it's chal- it can be very challenging. We got really lucky with Cognizant um, early on. It's been a, it's been a great brand name. Um, and we, we actually use it all around the world. Um, and in marketing the product uh, as a dietary supplement ingredient. What was the process of deciding to to create Cognizant in terms of 
its benefits. And what's that time frame? So somebody internally, pharmacist or otherwise, says, you know, I think we can support brain health and speed and what have you. We're going to do that. What's that time frame? How long did it take to get Cognizant from thought to market? Wow. Um, that's We've been marketing it in, since the early, early 90s, but it's been um, on the market in, in different areas of the world um, for brain protection, brain health. Um, it, it's even used as, in a drug in some countries. Um, so the brain nutrient part, it, it, it's, it, it provides choline. So choline is one of the most important nutrients for your brain um, because it helps it create acetylcholine, um, which is for transmission of um, information and, and um, nerves in your brain. But what what's interesting about acetylcholine, and it also provides choline, but acetylcholine is in every cell of your body, very, very small amounts. Um, the most the highest portions of acetylcholine are found in the liver and the brain. So I would think way back when, when they were creating uh, acetylcholine and thinking like, why are, why are so many of these molecules of acetylcholine found in the liver and in the brain? Um, what does that mean? Um, so that, that it probably has you know some protective effects, um, but many, many years to kind of figure all of this out. Um, we, we first started, you, when we first started testing and studying Cognizant, um, we didn't know what direction it would take us. We didn't know what the dose levels would be. So you, you kind of start with a dose that for a dietary supplement or functional beverage, you start with something that's usable, um, 250, 500 milligrams and see what happens. You're, you know, you, you throw a battery of tests out there and, and see you know, where, it, where it can be beneficial. Um, and, and we knew it would, would, would focused in on the brain, um, but we had to study this in healthy people. We couldn't study something in a disease population and then use those same uh, claims in a, in a dietary supplement, in a functional beverage. Um, so that's really, really important. And, and to make any impact in a healthy person, um, that, that can be hard. So from a clinical standpoint, this, our scientists are brilliant at kind of developing the, the best studies, the best tests uh, to show it, it does have an impact. Um, so I know the company has a, a strong interest in gaming and esports. I mean, Cognizant obviously is, um, it addresses multiple issues that gamers have or, or not even issues that they have, but, but it supports all the... the the uh, the physical demands and mental demands of gaming and that's not only esports on a professional level but also on a casual level when did esports and gaming shine a light internally where you say well that's a target audience for us what can we do for that and and then obviously you got involved in, in the esports trade association but before doing that where was the impetus to say, you know, we can really be a, a powerful asset to the gaming com community? Sure. Yeah. The cognizant, it's, it's a non-stimulant. So it was, but it, it, it helps with focus and attention. And it was a, a real a natural fit in sports. Um, the gaming part came, came separately because some of the tests that we did in in the clinical studies were tests that gamers do tapping movement um motor speed those were things that that would come naturally and fit with a gamer um and i think it was 2019 we were the first ingredient supplier to be at south by southwest in austin um so we were at the the gaming portion of south by southwest and had a booth um we were doing um displaying one of our we call it the tap test where you would um tap on a, a an ipad or computer as fast as you could and so we'd have contests going you would not believe the amount of people that stood in line waiting to do that tap test because it was just it was fun it was gamifying right. one of those little clinical tests and they they the line was out the door. We had five people working and no one could keep up with it. Um, we worked with some of our, our, 
our key partners and having finished product there because if why would we just be there with nothing to give away we had to show consumers that this is this is cognizant in a finished drink in a fin- finished beverage in a supplement um, and this is where you could find it and that was really a big hit um, the tap test was kind of the attraction when the t-shirts win the product right. but having the finished product there was was we knew at that point that there's something more here um, and we can, we should continue in, in that direction. What other products do you look at? We're not even products per se. What other uh, behaviors and skills that gamers um, utilize that the companies now wants to address in addition to Cognizant? Yeah, I think I think with Cognizant, it, it's a natural fit, focus yeah. and attention. And you're sitting there and you, you need you have to be accurate um, with we, we have ingredients for GI health. We have ingredients for overall antioxidant health of your body, um, just making for healthy living. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think that that's an area that we need to explore more in, especially in gaming. Um, I, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about gaming and what you're doing is amazing because you're getting information out to everyone. Um, and it, what we first learned in getting into this is that it's such a dynamic area, but responsible area. And I, I don't think people understand that um, or know about gaming is it, it can be helpful. It can be responsible. And it is. It is. Um, There's no question. I mean, you, you'll, you'll preach to my choir saying <laughs> that. Yeah, I, I think, you know what? And, and Skins has been involved in gaming and I've been involved in gaming for you know quite some time now, um, unintentionally, but there and I love it is yeah, gaming has not been respected as an activity uh, for so long. So the health and wellness part of that was ignored, right? Because you used to have parents and listen, I know you're you, you've got children that that game. Um, you know, you go back 10 years, parents didn't want their kids to game. They wanted them outside. They didn't think they can get an academic scholarship. They didn't think that they can make a career out of it or that it helped with eye hand coordination and spatial awareness and story and, and what have you. But now it, 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 it certainly got a long way to go, but there's so many areas from, um, eye health, Right. I mean, that that's a big area. So do you like sit down and go, OK, we, we can deal with eye health. We can deal with gut. We, we can deal with um, metabolic changes and strength and, and what have you. Is that like a white canvas that, that your researchers say, go for it, <laughs> go get a team of gamers and see how we can help them in all those areas? We, we have an ingredient for eye fatigue, um, which is a perfect fit, too. Um, it, it almost we, we look at it from a marketing standpoint of who it would help the most. Um, but also education is really important. And that's, it. you know, we're marketing a product, but we're also educating. And I, I think that is probably the bigger message here. Um, we have a product that can be taken, it can be consumed, but educating that person on why they need to do it is, is really, really important to us. Um, so it comes back to that, making sure we're, we're socially responsible and, and from an environmental standpoint as well. But um, we do have a lot of different ingredients that would be really nice fits. It's, it's just a matter of the, the right message and, and the right partners, the, the right finished product right. is out there. Right. Um, because again, we don't have a finished product. We, have, we work with our partners to have a product on the market. Was there ever a thought to actually have finished products or the company's um, viewpoint is we'll be a partner with our ingredients that we're not necessarily a, a, a CPG company? We're an ingredient support company. Well, we're in, in Japan. Kirin is a finished product company to get direct to consumer. Um, here in the U.S., we're, we're not. Um, we have thought about that. We have considered it. But we don't, also don't want to compete with our customers. Right. Um, we would want to do something would be a win win for both create market awareness and grow together. Um, but again, not competing, but hel- helping drive success of, of both. Yeah, I mean, the one thing uh, that I have found with a lot of gamers, certainly on the younger side of gamers, is that they believe that they're invincible. So that, you know, having a supplement um, is, oh, that's something my, you know, my parents or my grandparents would take. Or if they have pain, 
eh, we have pain or we want energy, we'll, we'll go take a, a Red Bull or Monster or whatever that with all the terrible ingredients that are in there. How do you get them to think that, you know, they're not really invincible, that where they are right now is a threshold of where they're going and the more that they can support themselves today, the better it will be, you know, when they hit 30, 35 and 40 and, and on. I mean, to me, in, in our world, that's one of um, our goals is to educate uh, the invincibles mm -hmm. because pretty soon they won't be invincible, as we all know. Uh, and, and, and I don't know if that's part of the education is to, to get young and say you're, you're really not invincible, that, that the damage that, that you're creating is really foundational damage that you can repair now to save you discomfort and pain later in life. And, and the message is really, really important to making sure it resonates. And that's why with Cognizant, it's it's such a neat ingredient because it's not just a nutrient, but it's also this um, performance enhancing um, type ingredient that can you can see both the short term and the long term effects. Um, and I, I, I call it it's kind of weird, but um, the Optimus Prime of Colleen's because it's like the, the best. It's the leader out there. And, uh, you know, the transformers, it's more than meets the eye. So um, that's, that's an old, probably term not used very often anymore, but <laughs> is, uh, is there a, a, an age threshold that people can start taking it? I mean, is it, can you know, cause yeah. all, cause these ingredients will help little leaguers. It'll help, you know, uh, T-ballers to a certain extent, but at what age do, do you think that it, it it helps to introduce um, these 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 proper standards and protocols. It um, we have studies um, starting for healthy adolescents that start at age thirteen, wow. um, but citicoline has been used in younger individuals like four and up. Um, so there is there are safety studies out there to show it's safe in this population. Um, we don't necessarily target that, um, but if if a a parent were to give that to a child of that age, um, there would not be any safety concerns. Um, so well, that's great. No, Cause yeah. most people don't think that, right. Right. When you take a supplement, you always think, well, it, it's really for adults. There are very few, as you say, adolescents, but that's a great time for them for many reasons. One, it's going to help them, but two, psychologically, the better they perform, the better they'll feel. And then, you, you know, you've got a, a whole body integrated approach to health and wellness. And and since gamers are starting, um, oh, I don't know, five or six. I, I was just playing Mario Kart with a five and four year old last week and getting beat, by the way, uh, <laughs> with, without any ego involved, but getting beat. Um, it's remarkable. I mean, it really is remarkable. And I, you know, I see the skill set from them and the spatial awareness and and the logic that they have to follow and things like that. So it'd be interesting. Um, and, and then you've got to market not to the gamer, but to the gatekeeper mom. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is a whole nother uh, target audience, which which is fascinating. So in the limited time we have left, I mean, your 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 history um, and background is fascinating. How does somebody, if you, you, if you give a recommendation to um, an early college student or high school student that has your interest, what do they do? What would you recommend for people to get in the industry, uh, to be part of some of the exciting things that not only you're involved with, but the company is as well? I, I think to follow your passion is probably the biggest uh, most important things that you find interesting um, to go down that road. Um, I've, I've seen so often people get to their retirement age and they've been doing something for 30 or 40 years that they didn't like. Um, and now they're retiring and they're deciding to do what they like now. <laughs> like, All your friends that are doctors, you know, my, yeah, you know, I used to be a lawyer, <laughs> right? I mean, I used to be a lawyer, lawyer. my lawyer friends go, how'd you get okay. out? So, um, you, you get out because you care enough to do not to get out, but to do something, uh, different are the opportunities for people who want to do what you're doing broader now than they were before there's just more places to do it absolutely i work with so many dietitians in the industry from food companies dietary dietary supplement companies they all have dietitians on staff they all have food food scientists on staff that that make the products and that that's 
just grown by leaps and bounds. And lastly, your single current recommendation for gamers. Oh, wow. Um, Taking cognizant would be one, but sleep is one and two and one and two. (laughs) Take cognizant. And then when you're done, take some more cognizant. Uh, um, And rightfully so, because it works. But um, exercise mind and body. I mean, where where does like, you know, because I I know the company is so um, forward thinking in whole body that um, and gamers don't kind of think whole body. They they think either speed or blue light or or what what have you. Um, yeah, getting up, moving around, physical movement. I that's uh, Oculus is amazing because it gets the kids moving. It gets people with the virtual reality headsets and then the arm and leg movements. Um, that I think that's going to continue to grow um, and. It, it just it it does activate everything at that point. Um, so movement is is pretty critical. Not not sitting in a desk chair all day long. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's that's what we face at, at Skins. Is how do you get people not to have you know if you're gaming six seven hours a day, you've got to get up. You just got to get up and and move. And if and if you don't, you do create a whole lot of uh, anti gravity situations ergonomically and, and what have you um and and i don't think we think about that enough um and we should the one thing you have to promise me is more and more research comes out you'll come back and talk to me about it oh and, absolutely because uh, uh, I, I love what you you guys do and and you are like the perfect perfect person with this history from the emt days to uh, branding globally and now i know you get six months in michigan to enjoy the summer um watch your kids game and and um, i am sure we'll talk soon thank you for spending the morning with me Thank you, Gary. It's been a pleasure. It's my pleasure, and uh, we will talk soon. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Thanks for listening. This podcast is part of the MAP Esports Podcast Network and produced by Innovation Media Enterprises. Please be sure to leave us a review and follow us on your favorite podcast player.